Hi, I'm <clears throat> Dr. Alec Feinberg, and uh, I'm going to be discussing negative entropy uh, and a thermodynamic fifth law and your health. Uh, this is likely part one of two. Uh, might take a while to get to part two. And this part will be a layman's discussion on the topic. And I think it's very informative. You will uh, learn a lot about your health as well as uh, entropy in general. And um, so uh, I think it's an interesting discussion and it'll probably stimulate uh, your interest in the subject. So um, I wrote a law on the on a law of negative entropy. You can call it a fifth law of thermodynamics. You can call it a law of negative entropy. But in general, it's a, it's a good law, and it discusses. Uh, it's a kind of a it's long overdue to have a law on on what we call order, which is another way of talking saying negative entropy. Uh, and you'll see why that is, and why why such a law would meet the criteria uh, for why this makes the criteria for a good law of thermodynamics. So in part one, we're going. This is this is part one. We're we're going to be talking in layman's terms. So in layman's terms, the law of negative entropy would be uh, that's described here is the natural reliability of a living system is dependent on the on its spontaneous growth and repair rate. Uh, so this is a measurable quantity. In part two, it'll be more technical, and we're discussing uh, another version of the law. As you know, sometimes um, people write the the second law of thermodynamics in numerous ways. And, uh, and similarly, we can write the law of negative entropy in numerous ways. And <clears throat> so in this case, um, we'll be discussing the law, a living system spontaneous growth and repair or repair rate is dependent on its, what, what did I call the L Carnot efficiency. The L stands for a living system. So it's a modification of the Carnot efficiency. Um, it just kind of worked out that way. It wasn't trying to modify the Carnot efficiency. Uh, it just that's the way it worked out. So when we get to that part, you'll uh, likely sometime in uh, 2019. I'll probably present that on YouTube. And let's talk about why this is a good law and why it meets the criteria for a good thermodynamic law. So first of all. It explains a not so obvious part of nature that other laws do not, and thus many scientists have objective to the second law. Uh, and we'll discuss more about why scientists object to the second law. Uh, not that it's wrong, but just the fact that there's no law counterbalancing that on order. Um, and uh, as a reference to that, you can look up the Schrodinger paradox, uh, and you know, he wrote that in 1944, um, made the observation that uh, we, you know, our universe or our immediate universe <clears throat> is filled with cities and we live in houses and we're very ordered in our society. So why don't we have something that explains that? Why do we have a second law of thermodynamics that we've been living with all these years that doesn't really explain uh, order. <clears throat> so that's what this talk is about. Now the other thing that's a, a good criteria is that growth and repair are spontaneous ordered events. We, we don't have any control of that. Just like the second law is a spontaneous disorder is a spontaneous uh, occurrence, so is growth and repair. And Lastly, it doesn't violate the other laws of thermodynamics. So if you're interested in a, uh, before I get to part two, you can look at the paper that this is originally published on. Uh, there's a preprint on my website, and um, it's copywritten. I just should mention that it's copywritten IEEE Explore, uh, copyright, uh, IEEE copyright for, uh, paper. So, um, uh, and it's a preprint. So the fifth law requires common sense. In simple layman's proof of this of the law of negative entropy. So again, 
the natural reliability of a living system is dependent on its spontaneous growth slash repair rate. So what, it, what would be a simple proof of that? We're going to, common sense is that if a living system has perfect repair and, or growth, the system will live forever. So it's a common sense law, but it's not so obvious. I mean, people in the health industry focus on drugs, cures. They don't really talk about your growth and repair rate uh, as a good tool, not only as a measurement, but why aren't we more focused on uh, what things can help our growth and repair rate uh, in, in the solving for the keys to aging. So there's a lot of common sense in this, and it really applies to your health. And the common sense part, it's, it, you know, it's not a perfect measure uh, barometer of your health, but it is a very important concept to have knowledge of. As I mentioned, the thermodynamic law on order, whether we call it the fifth law or we just call it the law of negative entropy, this law, it's long overdue. The second law of the entropy of the universe is increasing has its critics. After all, as I mentioned, we live in a very ordered world. We have highly organized cities, houses. Mother Nature cre also creates order. Birds build their nests. Uh, there are ant farms. We, we, you know, we've seen that when we, um, how ants organize. Plants are highly organized. Our, I mean, our planets. So, as we mentioned, other famous scientists like Schrodinger have pointed out that there's a paradox with the second law. And after all, we can ask, what do we really know about order compared to what we already know about disorder? Because we focused on it so much with the second law. Maybe it's time that we started to understand more about order in our universe, and that will help us understand longevity uh, in our own, <coughs> uh, for what we uh, have from our day-to-day -day living and the consequences of violating the laws of order. And I, I, in the paper, I point out some of the consequences of viol There are consequences when you, you can violate order in the universe. And as you know, there's human nature and there's mother nature. Mother nature is not going to violate order, but human nature has atomic bombs and uh, really can cause quite a, a problem with, and cause violations uh, on uh, order in itself. So, what is a living system? So, what's, some examples of living systems are trees, plants, animals, humans, um, and and maybe we really can't describe all the living systems, you know, just by that simple phrase. But these are our common everyday knowledge of a living system. Um, <clears throat> So we know that order in a living system gives way to disorder, and that's kind of what the second law is about. So, uh, but examples of repair rates uh, decreasing living systems as they age, um, here's an article uh, that you might look at, um, the differences in bone healing in young people versus, in, rather in, in young versus old mice. It's a pretty good article on that. Uh, and we, we really should do more studies about repair rates and be able to come up with a measure for it. It is a measurable quantity. So some other statements on, mother, on, on negative entropy. I originally started out that Mother Nature has a natural tendency to create system order from available work and matter, attempting to maximize system work efficiency with its neighboring environment, i.e. attempting to maximize the system's free energy in the working environment. So the problem with this statement is that it is somewhat obvious, and most of us would agree that the second law allows for order by doing work. Um, but the second law's spontaneous acts aspect is unable to explain growth and repair uh, as spontaneous events. Therefore, I focused on a law of order related to uh, growth and repair. So. Therefore, the original statement is more, this, this statement that I'm describing about growth and repair is more insightful, it's more helpful for everyday use, and it, it's related to a spontaneous occurrences, um, and it's more unique. 
so I think it's a better law of negative entropy uh, from what I originally had. And um, so we're going to focus on that. So let's look at a motivation for a fifth law, or at least a law of negative entropy, compared to the second law. So there's, a, in thermodynamics, there's a language of spontaneous. So like, for example, one way of phrasing the second law is that the spontaneous tendencies of a system to go towards thermodynamic equilibrium cannot be reversed without at the same time changing some organized energy or work into disorganized energy and heat. So that's very clear. As I mentioned, uh, this earlier phrasing that I had, uh, where you can do work to create order, is actually part of the second law, so it's not so obvious. But then the problem with the second law is that, uh, the problem with this, with this statement is that living systems have a spontaneous ten tendency for growth and repair, an event that is also very common in nature. Therefore, which spontaneous tendency, in effect, are we to use in the second law? The one that causes order, or the one that creates disorder? Or do we have to somehow prove that they are one and the same by the second law? Certainly, we can prove that the net results is increased disorder. So uh, a little bit confusion, confusion, confusing there. So what I meant by the last thing is that we can prove that the net results is disorder, is that yeah, we as human beings, we we can repair ourselves to a certain extent. We don't have perfect repair, but and a, and that repair uh, causes um, creates dis, some disorder uh, to do that. And eventually, we don't have perfect repair. We die, and in so doing, there's waste uh, even when we repair or when we die, and that uh, waste is more disorder to the universe. So we see that the second law kind of wins out, but the, we certainly have to ask ourselves, shouldn't we have a law that talks about growth and repair um, because it's related to spontaneous uh, events in nature? So this, there is this problem with the concept of spontaneous. It, it, in, it, it clearly in the second law uh, applies to disorder. Yet living systems uncontrollably, uncontrollably grow and repair, creating order. So we'll look at a little summary of the second versus the, this fifth law that we're talking about, or the law of negative entropy. So the second law is about disorder, and the fifth law is about order. Both are spontaneous. The second law is a law describing aging or disorder. The tendency for disorder is often termed spontaneous. Entropy disorder in the universe will increase. We've talked about that. So the law, the fifth law is a law about order. Living systems grow and repair. Order also occurs in a spontaneous way. It's uncontrolled. This is negative entropy. So the second law states that states the entropy disorder of the universe is increasing. While the fifth law says, well, yeah, but not so fast, there's also a tendency for negative entropy order as well. Aging in our bodies, for example, is counteracted with growth and repair. Overall, aging wins out, uh, but there is some balance extending our lifetime. Living systems create order and, in a way, uh, counteract disorder. So growth and repair extend outside the living system, because after all, living systems, which indirect, can interact with the, with the environment, creating order, uh, and that causes growth and repair on our planet. And not always does disorder win out in a way, because uh, you can see they, that we are a highly organized uh, <clears throat> life form and there's more order on our planet than there is disorder in many ways. So now we don't violate the second law because we know that in order to create that order, it costs work to do and uh, energy, and there was things that got thrown away and stuff like that. So uh, 
there is disorder that increases. But the second and the, the so the fifth law and the second law both require common sense and don't necessarily need proof. I mean, I provided you a proof for the fifth law, and some people will say that the carnal cycle is related to the second law uh, and has a lot to do with it. Um, but the carnal cycle, uh, we'll get into that when we get to the technical discussion, but just a little preview, talks about reversible situations and really doesn't talk about disorder, um, but provides some insight into spontaneous occurrences that, you know, heat of heat flow. So uh, here we have uh, a discussion between the second and this fifth law that we're talking about in this presentation. So the fifth law has good consequences for your health, living system reliability, your well-being must be tied to your repair and growth rates due to spontaneous nature of growth and repair. So finding a way to measure your repair rate is important in medicine development, in exercise development, interacting your body with energy methods, new ways to channel one's energy, nutrition development. It takes energy for growth and repair. Since it is spontaneous, we can only measure it. Learning how is very important. Often sciences focus on food and drugs rather than energy-related uh, situations. So this presentation uh, is, a, is kind of a, you know, sh is, is really also a presentation to people out there. I'm sharing some of the research I've done and I'm saying, hey, wait a minute, we really need to start looking at growth and repair and the, how uh, we can improve that and how it can be violated, how order can be violated and how order can, can be increased and uh, support it. So uh, obviously, as we mentioned, there's a lot of common sense. We know a lot about, you know, exercise is important, for example. We know that. So let's look at the negative entropy repair cycle. So we know that we have uh, the most important part of negative entropy in ourselves is uh, eating right. And uh, when we do that, uh, we now are going to try to repair a damaged area. So some of the energy that comes from our food uh, uh, is used for input to uh, in, to repair the damaged area. Okay. So some of the area, some of the energy input is used for daily is used for daily activities, which create external, which can also create external order, which is another form of negative entropy. Some of the energy. Uh, that we get from our food is used for body heat. Uh, and again, some of the energy is just inefficient. Um, <clears throat> so, and we know that energy input for damaged areas is not 100% efficient. Negative entropy for repair creates order and is a partial unrepaired, there's always a partial unrepaired part uh, that uh, increases our aging. So, uh, as we don't have 100% perfect repair. And um, so the next paper, or the paper discusses a lot about efficiency of repair and uh, the importance of that as a measuring tool. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about exercise and health because it's very key. And what, you know, the difference between uh, exercise stress and um, how we fatigue, how fatigue can help us and how fatigue can hurt us. So there's a lot of common sense involved. So there's an article that I, uh, th this article here, where I got, I kind of conceptualized this curve here. And this is called an SN curve. And SN curve is a stress to number of cycles to failure. So let's look at that for metal fatigue. When you bend a paper clip back and forth, your stress cycles are how large you make a bend. So let's say we're making a bend, um, a very low bend. So we have a very, our stress is not very high. This is a high stress, this is a low stress. So if we make a low stress, we can get a lot of cycles before the paper clip will break. If we bend it quite a bit, so we're, we're up here, 
we won't get very many cycles before we'll get failure. So there was a study also on the human heart, and it showed that high stress versus low stress. So low stress, uh, you're not going to your cycles to failure for the heart, uh, and high stress can be similar. So over exercising and no exercising are not good for the heart, but just the right amount of exercise is the it, uh, will uh, increase. So you don't want to over uh, exercise. I mean, you don't want to start training for a Boston Marathon by going 26 miles. You need to build up to that. Um, and certainly maybe a lot of us are not able to do that. And uh, so we have to find the our use the common sense. We don't want to overstress ourselves, but we don't want to understress ourselves. We need that daily activity. So that gives you some idea, uh, a little bit more idea about how to improve your negative entropy uh, and make it efficient using exercise. Now, growth and repair are similar. A repair actually requires growth. It's a remove and replace. So um, if, as you think of it, growth and repair are very similar in that sense. Uh, now, some living systems, like plants and trees, they have no repair. So trees, um, they have no nervous system, so there's no biofeedback. So they don't even know that there's something broken uh, when their tree limb breaks, so they don't try to repair it. Um, so how does growth and repair happen? And we talk about that in part two. Uh, and, I, and when I talk about setting up a non-equilibrium state, that drives growth and repair towards equilibrium. So a lot of times we have to understand what do we really know about order. Uh, so we don't really know that much. We know a lot about disorder and why that occurs because uh, things want to come to thermodynamic equilibrium. For example, a metal rusts. A metal will start to rust and that's its lowest thermodynamic state. So. Uh, that being said, how, how what drives order? So, some sort of work, but you know why does it occur, and you know why will that happen to begin with? You know, according to the second law, for example, this is the Schrodinger paradox. Why don't we just let our bodies fall apart? Why is this the spontaneous need to grow to grow and repair? And so. There's a lot involved. We don't really completely understand order. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, we don't really know that much about order uh, in, in many ways. We don't really understand uh, how spontaneous order occurs, uh, so there's some discussion on that. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about the fifth law and external order. So, in accordance with this law of negative entropy, or whatever you want to call it, the fifth law of thermodynamics, external and internal order are essential for living system reliability. We know that living systems create external order. So, if we talk, call it a fifth law, it's not limited to internal growth and repair. Living systems have a propensity to organize, grow, and repair houses and cities. Thus, living systems are avail, ha, use available work to organize to survive, both internally and externally, for high reliability concerns. We know that, that common sense is required when we talk about living systems creating external order. And I mentioned, we have to make the distinction between human nature and mother nature. The mother nature in us will want to create order. The human nature uh, can be difficult because we know that uh, there is a lot of destructive things that occur. Um, uh, you know, an atomic bomb is, for example, a very destructive and can cause irre irre irreproducible events that uh, can interfere with our ability to, to create order down the line. So there's really a lot of danger uh, with human nature uh, interfering with Mother Nature. 
Um, but there's also a lot of good in human nature, so uh, hopefully that will win out. Uh, so in part two, just a little, uh, we'll talk about the interpretation of the fifth law uh, is, uh, and the technical understanding of it, understanding growth and repair. So the reason for separating this into two parts is that part two requires really a lot of technical knowledge of thermodynamics, and part two will likely have, you know, maybe some thermodynamic experts interested in the high-level discussion, um, not necessarily for the basic principles um, that are as irrefutable in part one. So we know that this part one that I discussed, you know, it's pretty common knowledge, nice uh, irrefutable uh, discussion uh, that we have presented in this uh, slide presentation. I'm not saying it's completely irrefutable, but uh, we, we met a lot of criteria for a reasonable effort uh, for a negative entropy law of thermodynamics. And um, I hope you get a chance to uh, look at the paper or uh, maybe uh, visit part two when it, um, I get to that. And I want to thank you very much for uh, joining me in this discussion. So uh, just in a summary, um, living system reliability requires an understanding of order, uh, repair, and growth. Repair and growth generate more disorder than order when the environment is included. Spontaneous repair and growth do not violate the second law, but the second law tendency goes against the need for order in living systems. So this new law, the law of negative entropy, provides a survival tendency need to grow and repair. Repair requires uh, a non-equilibrium state that drives the repair to the original system state. The living system has a propensity to spontaneous repair damage. Since repairs are not 100%, this creates system aging. We discussed a simple proof of the fifth law is that if we had a perfect repair, we would live forever. We would have 100% reliability. Reliability and repair efficiency improves with optimal living system stress. We discussed that. Uh, from this law, Aging can be measured by repair and growth rate. This rate decreases with aging time, a good indication of the living system reliability. The, this uh, law of negative entropy, entropy can be extended to external order uh, as reliability living systems uh, will improve with external order. And that's really all I have for you. And again, thank you for uh, joining me in this discussion.